Hello, BookTube, and um, today I want to do a video um, about my top five favorite um, video game books or books about video games. There, was, there wasn't really like a something that was like, oh, I got to do this today. I have been reading one of my video game books and thought, hell, I should do a video about it. So the first book is um, simply called Super Mario. And um, I think it's actually got a subtitle. Uh, I don't know. It'll be there, there in a second. This is just a really, really good book. And let me just read the description to you. Um, the first princess that Mario saved was Nintendo itself. In 1981, Nintendo, Nintendo of America was a one-year-old business already on the brink of failure. Its president, Mino Arakawa, was stuck with 2,000 unsold arcade cabinets for a dud of a game called Radar Scope. So he hatched a plan. Back in Japan, a boyish, shaggy-haired staff artist named Shigeru Miyamoto designed a new game for the unsold cabinets featuring an angry gorilla and a small jumping man. Donkey Kong brought 180 million in its first year alone and launched the career of a short, chubby plumber named Mario. Since then, since then, Mario has starred in over 200 games, generating profits in the billions. He's more recognizable than Mickey Mouse, yet he's little more than a mustache and bib overalls. How did a mere smear of pixels gain such huge popularity? This book is amazing, especially if you love Nintendo. If you love Nintendo and you love Mario, um, if you love Nintendo and you love Mario, this book is, you won't be able to put it down. It'll be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And just being, like me being a, like a huge Donkey Kong fan and then being a huge Super Mario Brothers fan and just like going up that ladder. It, it's amazing to see how many times it didn't happen. So it's just a really good book. Now the second book I'm going to say is um, a book called Console Wars. Now, the funny thing about Console Wars, especially if you read Super Mario first, is that Console Wars... Oh, actually, let me just read the description of that to you, because it'll probably do a better job than I can. Okay, Console Wars is a mesmerizing behind-the-scenes business thriller that chronicles how Sega, a small, scrappy gaming company led by an unlikely visionary and a team of rebels took on the juggernaut Nintendo and revolutionized the video game industry. In 1990, Nintendo had a virtual monopoly of the video game industry. Sega, on the other hand, was just a faltering arcade company with big aspirations and even bigger personalities. But that would all change with the arrival of Tom Kalinske, a man who knew nothing about video games and everything about fighting uphill battles. His unconventional tactics, combined with the blood, sweat, and bold ideas of his renegade employees, transformed Sega and eventually led to a ruthless David and Goliath showdown with Nintendo. Me, personally... Um, I was Atari, and then I went into Sega, and then I went into Nintendo. So I was a little late to the Nintendo party. But after reading, um, uh, Super Mario, and you're, like, looking at Nintendo and Miyamoto and all these people, it's just, like, the most... Disney-esque characters, you get into console wars, which is awesome because it reads like a thriller. It's, it takes like over 200 interviews, I mean interviews with over 200 people, and then it becomes a book, like a narrative. Nintendo does not look good in this book at all, and um, when you go over it, like there are some practices that Nintendo does that you're like, what the fuck? Why, why would they do that? But knowing about the video game Crash of 83 and just like what the 80s did to video games, you can understand why they would do some of those things. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you just read these books and it'll all be clear. But um, if you do know what I'm talking about, then you, you know what I'm referring to. But anyway, 
it's an awesome thriller. Like, I don't know how else to put it. It's like, it goes from right after the master system. For Sega enthusiasts, you'll understand what I mean. The book starts kind of right after the master system is failing and goes up through, I think, Sega Saturn. Yeah, it goes from the master system to Sega Saturn. Um, That's like the timeline there. So anyway, it's a super, super good book. Now, if you've been living under a rock the last couple years, then you won't know the book I'm talking about. But if you do, um, so here is uh, Ready Player One. Obviously, that was going to be on this list because that book is just epic. In the year 2044, reality is an ugly place. The only time teenage Wade Watts really feels alive is when he's jacked into his virtual utopia known as the Oasis. Wade's devoted his life to studying the puzzles hidden within the world's digital confines. Puzzles that are based on their creator's obsessions. With pop culture of decades past, that promise massive power and fortune to whoever can unlock them. But when Wade stumbles upon the first clue, he finds himself beset by players willing to kill and take this ultimate prize. The race is on, and if Wade is going to survive, oh my gosh, he'll have to win and confront the world he's always been so desperate to escape. Okay, sorry, I just woke up like, 20 minutes ago, I have my notes on my iPhone, and my iPhone's on that low power mode, the yellow little battery thing, so it turns, the screen goes black every two seconds, so I apologize. But Ready Player One's great because it talks about, it's like a kid in the future playing all the video games that I played as a kid, listening to all the music I listened to, and watching all the TV shows that I watched. So it's almost like you're chatting with an old friend about a bunch of cool shit. So, um, with that being said, it's amazing. And then it has this whole, I'm assuming it's the whole like hunger games element kind of thing. I haven't read any of those books, but like from what I gather, everything's kind of like battle Royale, that um, Japanese movie from like 2000 that was flipping amazing. So it has that whole kind of feel too, where there's like people competing and all this shit, kind of like the running man, but it's all based on finding clues in these old video games. So again, if you're into Atari, this, I was even trying to get my wife to, cause I listened to the uh, audiobook that has Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton! I think she would even like it, and she doesn't know anything about video games. And one of the things that was so awesome for me is that one of my favorite Atari games ever is this, and it's basically what Legend of Zelda was kind of based off of or whatnot. It is, I've clocked more hours on that game than probably any other game, besides Donkey Kong. Like that game plays a huge part in the book. So for me, it was just like candy. I was like, oh my gosh. So anyway, moving right along. This right here, Playing With Power, this is the paperback. And the hardcover has a slipcase that looks like a NES cartridge. And then the book's gray with a controller on it. But basically, what this is, is... Um, I don't know if you remember back in the day, back in the day, there was this uh, magazine called Nintendo Power. And Nintendo Power had a cover story, walkthroughs, clues. This is all before the internet. So when you got your Nintendo Power in the mail, it was like, like, motherfuckers be warned. I, I know how to beat Mike Tyson's punch out now. You know, we're going to do this. As you can see, it's mainly just awesome articles and walkthroughs and stuff. Let me see how to do this. From Nintendo Power. The thing I like about it a lot is that I have a bookmark in... Oh, I have a bookmark on Punch-Out. I was actually using this the other day because I was having a problem on the last level of um, World 6 and Super Mario Brothers 2 or to purist Doki Doki Panic. I 
pulled this out and was looking at it. But the one thing that I really do like about this is that it sets the... Let's see if I can find it. Come on, you bastard. Well, it has this, like, history of the NES and how the color scale works on it and stuff, which is really cool. Damn it. Okay, let me see if I can find it in here. Okay, so page 28. So this is more of, like, a non-fiction reference book, but it's amazing. So anyway, they have this whole thing where, like, they, they have um, the NES set up into three periods and 86 is the early period and this is basically the launch titles um with the machine and so you have like mario brothers popeye balloon fight donkey kong donkey kong jr mock rider and it just kind of goes through those games and then you get to then you get to the middle period and i think this is when they blew up you have Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Pro Wrestling, Punch-Out, Rad Racer, Kid Icarus, and all that jazz. And then it takes you to, like, basically, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. But it's only games that were made by Nintendo. It doesn't have any of the third-party games. If you used to get Nintendo Power, you will actually... Like, go, oh my gosh, I totally remember that article, blah, 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 blah. And it's kind of weird. Now, finally, my gem in my thing. My gem in my thing. We have Tim Lapatino's Art of Atari hardcover. This book, look at the end pages. A bunch of screenshots. Um, this book is gorgeous. And awesome. It takes you through um, the history of Atari. It has a foreword by Ernest Klein from Ready Player One. Um, but it takes you through a bunch of the artists who... Ooh, look at that. I've always thought that cabinet was sexy as hell. Um, the people who made the games and then... Um, the people who put together the ad campaigns, um, who created the cartridges, the cartridge art, and the box art, um, the typography. It has all of the um, Atari logos that weren't used. Look at this ridiculous centipede um, thing. It's like some like green chick coming out of some mushrooms. Like they were gonna actually throw that down. Oh, and then this is ridiculous. They used to have this game called Gotcha. <clears throat> and it's about a dude chasing a chick. And the joysticks were big silicone boobs. Like things worked, some things didn't. Um but it is just like so in depth and like all the box art it interviews the artists and stuff oh, man this book is just oh, and then look at this awesome missile command fucking spread anyway um, if you like uh oh haunted house i fucking love haunted house oh my gosh oh my gosh it's so scary up in here oh look at this awful pac-man artwork yep that was a real thing i don't know anyway i could look at this all day so i probably shouldn't and it has like notes so like there's this artwork for mario brothers and it has like notes like, oh, you need to change this, you need to change that. So it's just, like, a beyond cool, like, um, and the sword quest debacle. It's just a really, really cool chunk of history. Like, I don't know another way to describe it. It even has stuff about, like, the Atari 800 and the home computer market. I don't know. It's just 
jam-packed. It's a beautiful book. Got that for Christmas, and um, I didn't put it down. It, it, it's, it's just amazing. So anyway, those are my top five video game books. Um, if I had a copy of Hyrule Historia, that probably would have edged somebody out, but um, alas, I do not. So, um, but yeah, what are your favorite video game books? Uh, let me know down below. And if any of you have read Armada, please let me know. See, and that's what I'm talking about with my stupid phone. If any of you have read Armada, please let me know because I really want to read it, but I haven't heard great stuff about it. But I don't know if the stuff that... Basically, I just want to know if I'm reading the novelization to The Last Starfighter. Um, yeah. So, any of that stuff, leave it down below. Say hi. Let's have a chat. High fives.